Welcome to part 9 of our Dark Forces lore play. Heads up for this episode, the game has some bug with the sound that causes it to crash, so I had to turn it off, but I got the music for the level at least. Last time we destroyed Ice Station Beta, one of the facilities that produced the Dark Trooper. Crix Medine tells us there's one more, the Ark Hammer, the flagship of General Rom Mach. Unfortunately, it moves around, so we need a way to find it. So we've come to Nar Shadda. Since some mysterious criminal kingpin is helping supply the Dark Troopers, we're going to fight our way through smugglers and bounty hunters to find the navigational data that should point us in the direction of the Ark Hammer. In both canon and legends, Nar Shadda was known as the Smuggler's Moon. It was made canon in the Star Wars comics, and that's provided us with our best actual look at it. The main characters of Aftermath Life Debt also take a trip there. It's like a giant version of Moss Eisley, a wretched hive of scum and villainy, and a good place to go if you need illicit goods, transportation, or information. That's exactly why Luke goes to Nar Shadda in the comics. He wants someone to smuggle him to Coruscant and the Jedi Temple. But he goes about this in the complete dumbest way possible, loudly asking a bar full of people if someone could help, all while flashing his lightsaber around. This leads to him being kidnapped by Gracchus the Hutt, a collector of illegal Jedi artifacts. So everyone has to go save Luke, and Dengar fights Chewbacca, and it's this whole big thing, but it's really cool. Anyway, that's about all we know in canon about Nar Shadda, so let's go into its Legends history. In Legends, Nar Shadda was the largest moon of Nal Hutta, and was largely controlled by the Huts. It's possible that's still true in canon, especially considering Gracchus's influence there. The moon had some extra nicknames like Little Coruscant or the Vertical City. Its structure was similar to Coruscant, but when you got in close, it was dirty and polluted. It was also less regulated by the government, so many corporations would set up shop there and actually developed new, advanced technologies with much less interference. Much of the moon was built by Hut slaves after they relocated to Nalhutta from their home planet Varl. For a while, it rivaled Coruscant in importance, but when trade routes shifted around 4,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, the Republic basically abandoned it, and that's when things really went downhill. The Sith saw some interest in the moon off and on, mostly just when they needed help from the Huts, but they even had a Sith Academy there around the time of Darth Bane. Nar Shadda was one of the few locations in the galaxy that actually celebrated the rise of the Empire because its citizens knew they would receive even less government interference, and they were correct. It's been used in a number of legend stories as a go-to place for lawlessness and danger. And that's just how the moon was for about 4,000 years. It wasn't until the Yuuzhan Vong War that things really, and I mean seriously, changed for Nar Shadda. The Vong were royally pissed off at the Huts, so they showed up and just wrecked the entire sector. The Smuggler's Moon fell under an orbital bombardment and invasion that destroyed the cities and every living thing there. The Vong stayed there until their defeat, and then they just left it in shambles but the Huts reclaimed it and began to rebuild. Eventually, it started to be a haven for smugglers and criminals again, and after about 15 years, Nar Shadda began to resemble its former self. While they're not confirmed right now, I think a lot of Nar Shadda's basic background is probably correct, at least up until the time of the Battle of Yavin or so. A one-time rival to Coruscant that was neglected by the Republic and fell into criminal hands. That all seems to make sense with some of the other shortcomings of the Republic when dealing with worlds outside of the core. But we'll just have to wait and see. Since we're almost to the end of this level, it's time again for a Kyle Katarn joke. Sniffy Whisper says Kyle Katarn is still canon because no one is brave enough to tell him he's Legends. If only that were the case. I've mentioned this before, but I do fear we'll never see Kyle in the new canon. He's kind of been split up between characters like Kanan, Jin, and Cassian. I, of course, hope to be proven wrong, but that's just what I'm guessing. Well, here's that nav data, so now we should be able to find the Ark Hammer. Surely nothing will get in our way now. We definitely won't have to fight through Jabba the Hutt's luxury yacht just as a way to pad out the game and add more levels. Wait, really? We have to do that? Alright then. The next lore play will be out next Friday, but until then, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, 
Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.